Good morning. We have worshiped, haven't we? I can just say I've been blessed. How about you? Your children have brought me great joy this morning. I think I counted 28 and missed a few even then. Have you worshiped? I would like to just turn our thoughts for a few moments to reflect upon uh, what was presented. The three joys this morning in the stories, uh, story of Jesus, as I reflected on it uh, this week, there were actually three different messages that came to mind with nine different points in, and I said, no, that's not going to work today. Let's try maybe one with three points. And I said, that's probably not going to work today. So we will just in summary fashion look at uh, the story. I think there are three joys that uh, draw out of the story of Christ's birth. The problem is that we live in a very complex world because none of our days are filled with complete joy. It seems we have joy for a moment, and then we have frustration. We have hope, and we have despair. It seems at one moment, everything is going well, and we open up a letter, and everything is not going well. It seems we check into the hospital on one day, and our firstborn is given to us, a precious gift of life from God. And on another day, we're checking into the hospital, and we're not sure what the diagnosis will be. And we live our lives in that tension between hope and joy and hopelessness and uncertainty. Many times we equate the word joy with happiness. I don't believe that that is necessarily a biblical definition of joy. And I read one author who suggested that joy is the subtle assurance that God is in control of the details of my life, the quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right, and the determined choice to praise God in every situation. Do you like that definition? Joy is that quiet assurance that God is in control. Joy is that hope that we have. And I believe Romans proclaims that that indeed is the gift of God to us, that it comes to us through the Holy Spirit, bringing us that joy that passes all understanding. Where would you find yourself in, that, uh, in the Christmas story today? Where would you find yourself among the cast of characters? Would you be part of the uh, religious elite? Would you be the innkeeper? Would you be part of the shepherds? Where would you find yourself in the Christmas story? I believe there are three joys that we can pick up as we reflect on the story of Christ's birth. There's the joy of hearing. There's the joy of hearing of the message that Jesus has been born. There's the joy of receiving that message, and there's the joy of sharing that message with others. Romans says, now the, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you might abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Because it is at times in our life of uncertainty. There's times in our life when we just don't know what's going to happen, that the Holy Spirit is poured out into our lives to give us that assurance and that certainty in times of uncertainty. 
So I want to go with you for just a few moments uh, to the story of Christ's birth. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. How many of you, uh, let me start out, how many of you reflect frequently on the birth of Christ? Raise your hand. I just want to see if you can raise your hand as we start. Everybody raise your hand. Okay. So we find that we find there the story in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And so we have the story told. Fear not, for I bring you, the Bible says, good tidings and what? What does it say? Great joy. Great joy that will fill the heart. There's great joy in hearing and receiving that message. You shall find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a great multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that the angels were gone away from them into heaven. And the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had, uh, when they had seen it, they made it known abroad, saying, which was told unto them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered after those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God in all the things that they had heard and seen and was told unto them. The joy of hearing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine one day angels appearing to you? Wouldn't it be amazing? The heavens open and there the angels descending, bringing the message that Jesus is born this day. This day, the joy of receiving the message. What joy there is when the message of Christ comes into the heart of the hearer. Can you say amen? What joy there is in receiving that message. The second joy in receiving that message. It's first to hear that message, but the second is to receive it into your heart that it might take hold, that it might give birth in your life, that the Holy Spirit will sink and work in your heart and life to absorb that message that this day is born in Bethlehem a Savior named Jesus and that He will save us from our sins. It will transform the way you look at the world. It will transform the way that you interact with others. It will transform your understanding of God as He has given His only begotten Son. And it is only by the Holy Spirit that that transformation can reach into our lives. The great joy of hearing the message, the great joy of receiving the message. But not only is there great joy in hearing and receiving, but there's great joy in sharing of that message. For it's not enough. It's not enough just to hear. It's not enough to just absorb and receive. It doesn't stop there. There is that responsibility to share it with each person we come in contact with. Because that is the fullness of the Christmas message. For when you go forth from this place, when you walk the hallways at your work, when you go through the malls of this Christmas season, when you visit in the hospital, when you visit with your neighbor, share with them the joy that fills your heart. Because by sharing, that joy is multiplied. 
Oh, friends, what a Christmas season it is. It's a Christmas season that is filled with joy. It's a Christmas season that is filled with pain and difficulties for others we come in contact with. It may be a Christmas season that is filled with pain in your life and uncertainty now. There may be issues of faith. There may be issues of relationships. There may be issues of difficulty that you don't know what to do with. For some, they have a seasonal dysfunctional effect. Christmas is a time of pain because of what it brings in terms of memories, what has happened in the past. For some, it's a season of great joy. For others, it's a season of of clouded with darkness and despair. But into this season, the Christ child is born to bring hope and joy that will fill our lives. I like the fact, friends, that the message was given to the shepherds. Where do you find yourself in the Christmas story? I'm wondering, do you find yourself as one seeking, looking for the Savior? One who has heard the message? Do you find yourself the shepherds? I find it interesting that the angels appeared to the shepherds. For the shepherds were were not the upper echelon of the religious establishment of the day. The shepherds in the caste system of the day were just a caste above the leopards of the society of the day. Theirs was a humble work. Theirs was a work of caring for the sheep. They were the unclean, so to speak. They were not permitted to go into the sacred places of the religious elite because of their caste and their working with the sheep. It's a strange oxymoron, so to speak, from a theological standpoint. How is the greatest message of all days given to the shepherds of the day? Friends, are you, do you know that you are called to be shepherds? Who do you, how many of you identify with the shepherds of the day? How many of you identify with the shepherds? One or two? How many of you identify with the religious Elite. How many of you identify with a part of the story that hasn't been alluded to, sinners in need of Jesus? And some of you would like to identify with something else. The good news today, friends, the goodwill that's spoken of here today brings us joy and the certainty that whatever comes into our lives, the joy is we have a Savior, Christ our Lord, born in Bethlehem. And by the presence of the Holy Spirit, the hope that may not be in your heart as I speak can be planted there by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that as you go forth from this place, that joy at two o'clock in the morning when you wake up pondering the affairs of life and what's going to happen, how is it all going to work out, gives, gives way from uncertainty when Jesus comes quietly into your life to give you the certainty that you are not alone, but unto you is a born a Savior this day in Bethlehem, that the joy that he brings might live in your heart as you receive it today with the hope of sharing it with others that you come in contact with. I have been amazingly blessed as your children have shared with us today. Have you? I've been amazingly blessed to hear them share that message. I sat with, I, I'm probably going to have to pick up my proverbial buttons from the front pew as they popped off. Just with uh, such joy and pride, there's really a community of believers here I'm straying a moment just from a message to express my appreciation. 
uh, to those who let out this morning in our worship service. Linda Scotto has done an amazing job in our children's ministry and the adults that have assisted this morning. But what amazed me was the great love that the Lord has for our community. Because as I sat and looked in the face of these children, they are the reason for the church to raise and provide a community in which the next generation, as they open their hearts to the Lord, their lives might be drawn closer to Him. They've done an amazing job in leading us out in worship today, haven't they? There is something so... I'm, I'm just speaking from my heart for a moment. There is something so incredibly amazing about children. They have a simplicity of faith that when something happens, they can go to Christ with it. And somewhere through the journey of life, we get things all twisted around and life becomes more complex. And we need to go back to that simplicity of faith that says, Lord, I don't understand all of life. I don't understand all of this goodwill all of this amazing grace that you would give your only begotten Son to enter into this world to die on the cross for me. But Father, when I come to Jesus today, I come with that desire that you would place that joy into the hollowness and into the hole that I find in my heart and in my life at times. I come with the assurance, Lord, that that goodwill that comes from your throne of grace through his life is my claim today. That is the joy that may be yours today as you leave this place to share it with others during this season of you. Let us pray. Father, from your throne of grace. You sent Christ into this world. And as we have reflected on his birth today, Father, it is indeed goodwill to men and joy to the world. Lord, in times of quietness, in times of aching, by your spirit of comfort, fill our hearts with his presence. As we receive that joy, Father, may out of our hearts flow that joy to others, that they too might experience the joy that we have in Christ. We ask in his precious name, amen.